Welcome in to the Locked On Knicks podcast. The New York Knicks fall 109 to 99 against the Miami Heat, losing their third in a row. We'll tell you how and why it happened and if Miami is the Knicks' kryptonite. All that and more right now on Locked On. You are Locked On Knicks, your daily New York Knicks podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. You are Locked On Knicks, your daily New York Knicks podcast. I want to thank you for making Locked On Knicks your first listen today. And every day is now available on all platforms. So if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and hit that notifications bell on YouTube to ensure you never miss an episode. And then on the audio side of things, hit that auto download function on your podcast platform of choice. But who's talking to you? I'm Gavin Shell, your favorite play-by-play broadcaster's favorite play-by-play broadcaster. I've been covering the NBA for about a decade now. And uh, not too many losses. Um, I don't know. Frustrating is the right word because the Knicks were, were – it never really felt like they were going to win this one. I don't even know if demoralizing is the right word because the Knicks the Knicks played their butts off and, and it was about all you can expect. But it, it just feels a little hopeless right now. And, and I, I didn't mean to start this pod on a dark note because I, I, I didn't really feel this way last night. But sitting with it overnight – there's just this frustration there. And what that derives from at the end of the day is the fact that this this felt an awful lot like Nick's heat in the playoffs last year, right? Where I think most people's takeaway from that series were, wow, the Knicks are so tough. Jalen Brunson is incredible. But man, Jimmy Butler is just better. And the Miami Heat are just tougher. And Tom Thibodeau is a good coach. And Eric Spolstra is a great coach. And while I would I would never really argue the merits of that last point, where I would push back is I, I still don't think it got quite enough play how beat up the Knicks were in that series, right? No Emmanuel quickly for essentially the whole ride. He obviously did not play very well in the first round. Um, did not look good. I, th- I think in the one, one and a half games he got to play against Miami. So who knows how big of an impact he ultimately would have had on that series. And then uh, Julius Randle playing through an ankle that obviously immediately required surgery for anyone who's watching. It was pretty clear cut that he was nowhere close to a hundred percent. Now, if that would have ultimately made a difference in the series or not, um, I'm not super sure about that just because uh, Miami Miami was more battle tested. Um, maybe maybe they were just the better team. But I think we're approaching a situation now where this game felt very similar to that. And yet the reasoning was exactly the same. The Knicks were simply too beat up to compete with this Heat team. Like the Knicks wrecked Miami in the game where Julius Randle got hurt. And we saw what a difference a healthy version of him, obviously, until Jaime Jaquez uh, uh, killed him. Thanks, thanks, Jaime. Um, and an OG Ananobi made. And it was painful for me because I wanted another shot at seeing Ananobi against this team because it, it it is the difference he has made since he was traded to this team, a team that looked, frankly, just a- after bullying the Cavs, not physical enough against Miami a year ago. Early in this season, when they played Boston, when they played New Orleans, they looked small. They looked weak. They looked like they could get bullied. They looked like that a little bit again in this one, where Jalen Brunson, and part of it was that he was sick, um, but he had a lot of trouble with Miami's size and Miami's aggressiveness defensively, putting like a long, super athletic defender on him in Hayward Highsmith uh, gave him gave him trouble, and and that's not common with Jalen. So you, you attribute it more to him being sick because every team's like, all right, we're just going to put a big dude on him. And he freaking torches them the vast majority of those nights. Um, but on a day when he's sick and doesn't have a lot of help and doesn't have OG Ananobi there, um, it's going to look a little bit worse at times. And this almost felt like a schedule loss for the Knicks, right? Coming off that utterly demoralizing game against the Spurs. You come back, you feel like you beat the Thunder. Jalen makes the play with four seconds left. Lo and behold, SGA comes back. Other end, Deuce is doing an incredible job at him all night. Hits the game winner with two seconds left. I mean, this is a team that is is just running on fumes right now. And, and give them credit for battling through it, right? Dante was still amazing last night. Deuce was still amazing last night. But it ultimately wasn't enough because Terry Rozier um, was absolutely cooking. And Miami... Um, won this game in the first quarter. It was 34 to 22 after one. The Knicks couldn't really do anything 
to slow down Rozier in a meaningful way. And that was pretty much the ball game. The Knicks outplayed the Heat. They outscored the Heat over the final three quarters of this one. Um, but Miami just had enough of a cushion and was doing a fantastic job on Jalen Brunson. It was just two for eight for six points in the first half. Finished the game just five for 18 from the field. One for six from three. Did get to 20 points. Did have 10 assists. Also had five turnovers. Um, but that's just not good enough. Again, if you don't have Ananobi, you don't have Randall. It's hard to survive a game like that from Brunson. If Terry Rozier is going to come out there and go 10 for 15, 8 for 11 from three, 6 for 6 from the line, um, the Knicks got down by as many as 15 or maybe it was 16 in this one, um, made a run late, tied it up at 92 on a uh, Bojan Bogdanovic jumper after Deuce hit that um, big three to cut it to three. Um, oh, excuse me. No, the Deuce hit the three to cut it, um, to tie it at 92. Um, and then from there, Miami dominated the rest of the game, a 17 to seven run to end it because the Knicks expelled so much energy battling back into this game. They just ran out of gas a little bit. And Rozier hit like another like crazy shot coming across the lane, another like sidestep fading three with Deuce McBride draped all over him. Literally could not have played better defense. And the Knicks were just done. They were out of energy and, and ultimately couldn't pull this one out. And Miami was honestly the more desperate team in this game too. I mean, they're battling to avoid the play in, but you, you look up and you, you see the standings and all of a sudden the Knicks are in that same battle, right? They are just a two games up on the heat for seventh, just a game and a half up over Indiana for sixth. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Should they be able to hold on at the end of the day? Like, yeah, they're, they're still in a good position, but the Knicks have vastly, underperformed even with all the injuries they have pretty substantially underperformed how good of a team they are this year what do i mean by that look at the net rating the bucks plus 3.5 the Cavs plus three the magic plus 2.2 the pacers plus 2.5 the heat just plus 1.5 on a per game basis this season the knicks are plus 4.5 even with all these injuries i mentioned in yesterday's show they've had the best lineup in basketball since March 1st, that's with no OG outside of three games. And obviously on that lineup, that's with no Julius Randle that entire time. A lineup of Jalen Brunson, Deuce McBride, Dante DiVincenzo, Josh Hart, and Isaiah Hardenstein remains, even after not performing particularly well last night, the best in the NBA, a plus 31.7 net rating in 139 minutes. That is still over five points better than the Thunder for the second best lineup in basketball. Um, They're scoring 138.4 points per 100 possessions over that run. That is extraordinary. Obviously, would be far and away the best offense in NBA history if you carried it over a full season. Their 106.7 defensive rating at that time would be just about the best defense in basketball this year. Um, so their starters are still great. Their bench and, and any combination of their starters and their bench is still really slacking. Bojan Bogdanovic uh, provided a break in that uh, last night. He was exceptional. Uh, we're going to get into that. We're going to get into Deuce's performance. We're going to get into a whole lot more coming up next on Locked On Knicks. But first, I want to tell you about our good friends over at eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors is everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered with over 122 million parts. For your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for with eBay Guaranteed Fit. Your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply eBay Guaranteed Fit is only available to U.S. customers. <laughs> All right, guys, we are back rocking out on Locked On Knicks, uh, falling 109 to 99 to the Miami Heat. Um, impressive effort in the comeback for the New York Knicks. I, I think we got to start off with Deuce McBride, who um, I just saw Fred Katz put these numbers out there, has been exceptional as a starter. Uh, as you would guess from the fact that that starting lineup is great. 20 points, three rebounds, three and a half assists per game. 
Uh, 50-40-90 shooting splits, about as efficient as you can get in the NBA. 51% from the field, 46% from the three, 94% from the charity stripe. Kevin Durant-esque numbers on four three-point attempts per game. Of course, doing that all somehow, playing 45 minutes and playing exceptional defense night in and night out. Um, He has been amazing. And I, I think to me, the most incredible part about it is there have been like a few outlier performances in there, right? Like obviously the nine three pointer game is just a crazy, crazy hot shooting night that is going to make all those numbers look better, but he's been consistent, right? It's, it's not been good game, bad game, good game, bad, even compared to someone like Dante DiVincenzo who coming into this year is a way more established NBA player and is also absolutely having a career season. Like he has just brought it every single night. And I am astounded by how good of a pull-up three-point shooter is. Obviously, some of those threes are coming off of Jalen Brunson drawing two or three guys. Like the one he hit to tie the game at 92 is Brunson getting middle, sucking in literally the entire heat defense, easy line up the laces, three for deuce, but he's also hitting ones in transition, right? Where where like um, he bats a ball for, or excuse me, where Josh Hart is, is able to run down a loose ball and then Dante is able to like bat it forward and, and deuce is getting it on the run, two dribbles, awkward three, defender flying at him. He's still able to go and hit it. The in-between game, I mean, he had this great, like, six, seven-foot contested one-handed push shot at one point. That was ridiculous. Um, He played pretty good defense on Terry Rozier, I thought, when he got that matchup. And it didn't really matter because Rozier was, like, again, it looked like a prime day Miller to this game. There wasn't really a whole lot to do with him. But I, I, I thought Deuce had some nice possessions. What in particular that I, I think ended in a shot clock violation. For Miami, uh, but the play of the day for Deuce was where he continues to show off not only his handle, but his ability to string multiple moves together and manipulate a defense with his eyes, which which is really the next step in his game. And if you have faith in him being the Knicks' long term backup point guard, because that that's sort of the dicey question that none of us have really had to address yet. Um, what does this look like next year when when everyone's fully healthy, right? And and Deuce is presumably unless unless the Knicks go and and turn around and trade Dante DiVincenzo, which I, I, I don't think any of us think is going to happen. Um <clears throat> excuse me. What does this look like next year in, in terms of his role on the team? Because he is pretty clearly not a point guard at this point. And yet you're starting to see inklings of point guardy things, not so much as a manipulative passer but as a scorer, and and that is the next step for him. The issue now is he generally needs an advantage to be able to play like that. So so let's zoom in on the play that I'm talking about. The Knicks, I I can't remember. I think it was Jalen who created like the initial run, but it was this great swing-swing sequence around the perimeter. Miami is is chasing the play. Um, They're behind. Deuce gets it in the corner. And, and 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 with with a guy charging in for a closeout, and that is the advantage that Deuce needs. But it's baby steps, right? Like when he has that advantage, he's able to make a play. Pump fake defender goes flying by. Jimmy Butler circles into help. Um, he's still behind Deuce on the play, and then Deuce just throws like a head and shoulders fake out to the right wing. Right, looks over the right wing. You can see I'm doing it if you're on YouTube. Not not in three dimensions, but in two. Um, and Jimmy just freezes and is like, oh, crap, do I have to X out to Dante now? And, and and in that moment of hesitation, Deuce pauses as well, then rapid fire acceleration straight to the rim for a dunk. So you see he knows what to do. The question is, can he find that advantage from a standstill? Does he know how to play off a pick to create that advantage? Those are the questions that are going to shape if he can ultimately be a backup point guard. But right now, he is a fantastic two guard, such a good pull up shooter hitting big shots. Um, he has been sublime. Like that's, that's the only way to phrase it. Um, another guy who has been uh, just fantastic uh, for the New York Knicks is of course, Dante DiVincenzo, who uh, on a night where, where Jalen just didn't have it uh, single-handedly uh, kept the Knicks in this game. Well, not single-handedly just deuced it a lot, but uh, double-handedly kept the Knicks in this game from a scoring perspective, 11 and 20 from the field, six and 15 from three, three free throws as well. 31 points. Four rebounds, four assists, four steals. The four turnovers were less than ideal. He was somehow, despite all that scoring, a minus 17 in 30 in um, 35 minutes. I think that had a lot to do with him sharing a bunch of minutes with Terry Rozier 
on the court, but he had a really nice game. I mean, even off ball, like early, um, like uh, Benji Ritholtz, her buddy highlighted on his Twitter, like really nice split cut where he kind of just looked like he was going to fade into the corner to set a screen. I think it was for Hart, And then at the last second, like splits towards the rim, I hard hits him um, for an easy layup. That was a beautiful play. Um, showed off a ton of hustle, like just hit big threes, timely threes. Like at a 30 footer at one point to get it back to single digits, um, had a backdoor cut off of Jalen Brunson for a big dunk. Like had, they had a give and go alley up and transition, had another huge three point play off a backdoor cut to cut it to five late in this game and give the Knicks a puncher's chance before Rozier put it away. Um, he just, it was just a really nice game for Dante. Um, at, at this point, it, it's kind of crazy because if you had scored 31 in a game like this early in the season, we're leading the podcast with it. We're talking about it for 20 minutes at this point of the year. It, it's almost a little bit ho hum. Like this is just who he is. And, and that is extraordinary given, um, given that, uh, the contract that he's on and that he's just never played like this in his career. Um, the next guy I wanted to get into was, uh, Boyan, who I, I thought this was, Maybe his second best performance as a Nick outside of was it the Wizards game where he just got scalding, scalding hot. Um, this was this was a massive game for him. And like the first time we've really truly seen him step up um against a great team. And I I wish he had played more minutes and and gotten some of Josh Hart's minutes in this game. And I know Hart, like we can talk, like he he did really good stuff defending Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler, 17 points, just five of twelve from the field, only one three. Not a particularly efficient outing from him, and a lot of that has to do with Hart. But Josh Hart played 46 minutes and had two points, while Bojan had 16 points in 19 minutes. And I didn't think the defense was bad for him. I thought, I thought this is like if you have hopes for him being on the floor in the playoffs, this is how he has to defend. Where there are going to be plays, he's going to get beat. There, he might even get back cut once, like he did in this game where Jaime Jaquez, I think, got him and Achua. It was kind of hard to tell who was the primary responsibility on that play. Um, but offensively, I mean, there were no questions. He was a beast, like started the night off with a start and go like sick layup. Like he is just for a guy who is in his mid thirties and balding and, and looks like he should not be able to blow by like an athletic high schooler. Like he is surprisingly fast and moves surprisingly well for a big older dude. Um, he has some burst, um, Right after that, had a three-pointer at the shot clock buzzer that just went in and out. But to me, that was almost, I mean, it was, it was a heartbreak of a shot just because the Knicks were starving for offense and starving to get back into this game in the first quarter. But it was kind of a good sign, like, all right, this might just be a good night for him. I'm at a, had a midi, got to the line, hit another three, was just flying around on defense, like like had this great hustle play to tip a rebound um, to keep a ball alive for, I think, I think it was Deuce who ultimately got it. Um, had another pump and go, and then just late in this game. I mean, the isolation buckets, like him and Jalen, like playing back and forth when, when Jalen started picking it up in the second half. And, and then Bogey said, bet, I'm going to match that. It was a rare opportunity for him to get the playoff runs. And you saw him go at Duncan Robinson. And that stood out to me in particular because I remember, and, and if you've listened to this podcast since last year, you, you know I was talking about this a bunch. I was saying, why can't Quentin Grimes go at Duncan Robinson? Why can't we play? Duncan Robinson off the floor. And sure, if you play bogey in a playoff series, the other team is going to be thinking the same thing. But in this game, like it was bogey making Duncan plays. And all right, you're going to put that guy on me. I'm one of the most efficient scorers in the league. Bet. Step back jumper. Fading foul line jumper right after that to cut the lead to one after the Heat responded with a three pointer immediately after um, bogey cut the lead to two. And then the Knicks um, ultimately tied it. Um, he was great. Um, if he could play like that, like he he should have a spot in the Knicks playoff rotation. And I wouldn't mind, particularly until the Knicks get fully healthy, if if he um got more minutes. Because I, I just think against teams like Miami, again, like you're playing the Kings. Maybe that's more of a Josh Hart game is he can score the ball and you need him on defense a little bit more, but there are going to be matchups down the stretch of the season, like maybe even against the Bulls, who've been playing some gritty defensively, um, where you're going to need Bogdanovich on the floor, at, at least until Julius Randle's back in this lineup. But who knows if that is ever going to happen. All right, on that somewhat somber note, we'll go over a few more players. Wrap this one up on Locked on Knicks. Fire TV is your destination from sports, from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Seriously, guys, I have never had a TV watching experience like this where I can get literally all my sports and all my shows 
in one place. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs, as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. That's right. You can watch Locked On with Fire TV. Fire TV channels lets you dive into all the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on all the latest in the world of sports, bars, madness, NBA, MLB, and lots more, not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, and cooking videos to boot. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you've checked out the Fire TV channels, if you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you absolutely should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit www.amazon.com slash lockedonfiretv.com. All right, uh, let's wrap this up going over a few more Knicks. Uh, Precious Achua, I thought, was was interesting in this one because um, he had a very mixed bag of a ball game. Like, it was was pretty horrific offensively. Um, I, I thought the decision-making wasn't there, and then the finishing just wasn't there. Like, over and over again, playing the four in, in what was a pretty weird lineup in his, his first go-around, it was, it was Precious. Brunson, Deuce, Devo, and Mitch. So it was like half small ball, half big ball. Did not totally work. Like couldn't find the offense, couldn't find the defense because no one was really able to contest Terry Rozier in a meaningful way. Um, And it just left Precious sort of in no man's land where like he wasn't spacing. Defenses could clog the paint. And and then when you have someone like Achua, like driving into a contested defense, like I don't know if it was just the minutes load or if it was fluky or this is fluky, but He's just not been the same play finisher he was about 10 games ago where you saw him driving to the heart of defenses and throwing up these crazy double pump layups. And it just had you thinking, all right, maybe there's a little bit more here with this guy. And tonight or last night, it just didn't look at it. Like he was looking off IR, trying to post Kevin Love, losing the ball two straight times. Another time, like got in the post with Duncan Robinson at him. And you, you heard Clyde call it out on the broadcast. He was totally right. Like he doesn't have a hook shot in his back. And again, Duncan on him, he should just be able to power right through him for a layup. Didn't do that. Passed out to Brunson. It was a live grenade. Shot clock was winding down. Ultimately led to a turnover. Like, it was just terrible, terrible offense every time he was on the floor. The Knicks couldn't score. Made life really, really easy on the Heat. On the other end of the floor, though, intriguing look for the Knicks if, unfortunately, they get Miami in the first round, which is looking increasingly less likely, for better or worse, because the Knicks are, are falling out of of contention for a three seed in the standings as Miami moves ever closer to contention for the six seed in the standings. Um, Precious as a switch defender, um, playing him some minutes at center. Like Tom Thibodeau, he, even, even as Isaiah Hartenstein starts to play better, like Hartenstein um, only played 18 minutes in this one. And it's because Tibbs liked the look of being able to switch with Precious. And it helped a little bit like Otto Rozier, Otto Jimmy Butler. And especially Miami's going to get Tyler Hero back. Like you are just going to need a scheme versatile big that's able to switch pick and rolls because if not, Miami is just going to have too many options on the floor offensively. And the trade-off of the Heat is their defense is not going to be quite as good as it was last year if they're playing Rozier. If they're not, who's, who's not a bad defender, but it's just kind of a decent one. And Hero, heavy minutes. And maybe the Knicks can survive with Precious uh, playing some center, though. It makes for a tough rebounding matchup, which you saw in this game where the Knicks were out-rebounded by nine which is obviously a, a rarity for them. And, and again, goes back to something we saw in the playoffs where the Knicks went from being the bully against the Cavs to being bullied at times against the Heat. Um, but still an interesting look. Um, I, I would personally, if I was Tom Thibodeau, I would have Isaiah Hardenstein on the floor because I, I think he's just he's just too good to not have on the floor, um, even, even with some limitations in terms of his switchability relative to someone like Precious. As far as the other two centers, Arnstein was solid. He wasn't great tonight um, in 18 minutes, four points, three steals, two assists, only took two shots. Pretty quiet game from him. Had one really nice drive on Kevin Love. Um, had one of his better defensive plays of the season where um, Caleb Martin like, is just a bullet going down the floor, like full speed, pedal all the way down, blew by iHeart in transition. And iHeart showed a gear I don't think I've ever really seen from him. And like, and just found a little more speed, caught up to him, swatted the shot out of bounds. That was awesome. Had an offense, like an impossible pass toward Deuce open when Deuce wasn't open, looking like 
Todd Brady out there, just just squeezing it in, and, and the defender. I, I don't even. It was. I think it was Rozier face guarding him. Like didn't even think it was coming. Just sped it into Deuce. Easy layup. That was nice. Mitchell Robinson just clearly. I mean, still getting his footing, getting back on track. It wasn't really a good game for him. Um, like he came in and Bam immediately baited a foul on him. Like he's acknowledged it's going to take some time to get his timing down. Um, had an offensive rebound and then just blew an open layup. Um. It, it it's going to be a little bit with Mitch. And I, I think, I think I had unfair expectations uh, for Mitch first coming back and being like, all right, he's just going to be the guy who left. And that, that, that wasn't realistic because he's, he missed 50 games of basketball. So you hope by the end of the season, he's a little bit closer to being himself. Um, As far as the standings, the Knicks, I mentioned it before down to fifth place game and a half back of the Cavs, the third still attainable, but looking less likely after Cleveland, Got a big win um, in Utah and outside of Donovan Mitchell. They're whole. They have Evan Mobley. They have Darius Garland. They have Max Struess. They have Jared Allen. Um, they're they're a little bit, e even without their best player, they're in better shape than the Knicks from a health perspective right now. Um, and Orlando just has a little bit of an easier schedule. It's also fully healthy. Um, if it stays like this, obviously the first round series isn't the end of the world. It's just, it's just getting Boston in the second round. That is... Going to be a killer, but you know what? Joel Embiid is back for Philly, so maybe maybe there'll be an upset there. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, we'll have you covered for that Kings game. Certainly not 100% sure if we're going to do a podcast tonight. Ox and I are going to talk that over. Uh, but until then, uh, we will talk to you very, very soon on Locked on Knicks. I'm Gavin Shaw. Thank you so much for tuning in.